everybody. We're live. Yay. Just a few minutes before 1130, just so that I didn't run into any technical difficulties. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I thought I'd start with my face, <laughs> showing my face today, because I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about what I'm planning to do today. Um, as some of you may know or have heard, I went to the um, Denver Art Museum Monet exhibit last weekend with my husband, and it was amazing. I won't tell you a lot about it because I have a whole video on it that I put in the description of this video. So please check that out. Um, give it a thumbs up for me. That'd be awesome and really helpful. Um, but I kind of go over all my thoughts from the show and what inspired me and what I love about his work and la di da di da So um, I was obviously super, super inspired to paint impressionistic landscapes after seeing that show. And Monet is one of my favorite artists. And so it was super rejuvenating <laughs> for my inspiration, I guess you could say. And um, I want to create a whole series of uh, impressionistic paintings, landscapes specifically or nature specifically. And so I wanted to kind of start one of those with you while you're watching and then we'll probably finish it next time, but um, kind of we'll see where it goes and see where we can end it in a place that I can pick it up later <laughs> and jump into it and not be too, um, too stuck or anything like that. So, and easily moving forward from where I left off. I'm not currently using oil paint, even though Monet, Monet probably used, most likely used oil paint with his most of his work. Um, I love oil paint, and I mostly do oil paint myself, but I'm currently pregnant at the moment. And there are safe ways to use oil paint, but I just kind of have been avoiding it altogether. So with that said, I've been doing acrylic instead of oil. Um, and yesterday I decided to try an impressionistic landscape painting um, before I went live to kind of get some practice with it again, um, and to do it with acrylic. Um, cause my goal is really to try and use acrylic in such a way that it can kind of look and feel like oil. So it's kind of my personal challenge for the year, um, while I'm pregnant to kind of work on that. So I'm super excited about that, but I wanted to show you a painting that I did yesterday that I am really excited about <laughs> and I like how it turned out, but it was a lot harder than I thought. So this is, I had a round canvas, just happened to have one. They're not super easy to find, um, but I happened to have this one and I was like, hey, I'm totally going to do a round landscape because there was one at the show of Monet's and I was like, hey, I'm so inspired to do that. So um, it was a nice challenge to try to do that on a round canvas. Um, but what was, what was I going to say about this? Uh, Oh, it was a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> I've done impressionistic work, but not so much in acrylic. And so, you know, my paint's drying on my canvas really quickly and my paint's drying on the palette really quickly. And I was just kind of like, man, this is a little more frustrating than I thought. But, oh, and then the other thing was that I was, I was too tight at first. I was making the sky too perfect. And I was like, I have to think like Monet. I have to simplify. I have to, you know, make it impressionistic, not realistic. So this is the end result. I forced myself as I got forward to really go into the, uh, yeah, detail with brush strokes. And I noticed I studied some of his paintings specifically and, um, I noticed that in the background he had less texture with brush strokes, and then as it came forward, he had more. So I'm like, I gotta do that. <laughs> like that's an observation I made that I need to make sure I incorporate. And he, you know, he left canvas showing through, and so I kind of did that in spots too. So um, pretty happy with the end result um, and where it came to. So we're gonna do a painting kind of like that, but I'm going to do a rectangle painting. So I'm going to shift you around here to see this. Hopefully we're close enough. There we go. Um, and I have a painting or a picture chosen. 
Let me pull that up real fast. I try to work for my own painting or for my own photographs because, um, well, Monet did that. He worked from life. <laughs> he was there. He saw the, the scene in person and he was painting plein air most of the time um, from his experience. And so for me, I take a lot of photos of things like way too many photos. Like my phone is always full because I'm constantly taking photos. It's kind of irritating, but at the same time, that's where I get my kind of, uh, capture my inspiration for things. And so recently my husband and I went to Monterey, California and, uh, took a lot of pictures of the ocean in May. Um, it was very pretty. And so I have a lot of stuff to pull from and I'm kind of on this ocean kick now after doing the circle one. So we're going to paint this gorgeous thing. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> see it from the distance, but, um, I just like the composition of this tree ocean in the background. There's this sort of tunnel that's created and then you get see these awesome shadows. The one thing I noticed about Monet and it can be a problem when I, when I try to paint impressionistically for myself, um, is that, you know, a lot of his work had dramatic lighting. And if I just choose a landscape that doesn't have like dramatic shadows and lighting in it, it's going to be dull. It's going to be harder to paint. And so I wanted some dramatic lighting, dramatic shadows for this to be easier, doable, all that stuff. So we're going to um, start diving in here to give you an idea of maybe my process which I still am trying to get the hang of with this impressionistic <laughs> style. But anyway, we'll start somewhere, right? All right, I want to get the horizon just mapped out. So I have kind of a general idea. Getting straight lines in um, Impressionism is kind of tricky because <laughs> it's like you want to kind of keep it rough, but things that are horizontal needs to need to stay horizontal. Okay. That might not be straight, straight, but we're going to work with it for now. And I double check sometimes later once I've put paint down and actually draw it this direction because you can see a straight line better than if you go sideways like this. I don't know why, but yeah, so. Achoo! Ah, bless me. Excuse me. So because yesterday when I did... Um, my circle painting, sorry, thinking and doing stuff at the same time. I, because it dried so fast, I want to use water this time to spray the paint occasionally to keep it moist. So I'm actually going to start by putting some water on my palette just to keep things moist when it's down. Sorry, I use the word moist. Some people don't like that word. <laughs> keep it wet, <laughs> keep it soft, whatever. Um, and I want to start with my background and work forward. And the background has blues in it. The sky has blues in it. But then it's behind this tree, obviously, right? I might actually just give myself a few more guidelines because I do want to make sure that I get, I'm going to have to face this at me briefly so I can get the placement of this.
And it's this nice little pocket. I love it of light. Just it's almost like a little tunnel, end of a tunnel, like a very circular. Put this dramatic shadow in there. I don't know if Monet like drew his stuff out first. I don't know. I don't really know his process very well. I should probably research that more. But either way, I'm working on my sort of copying skills in terms of technique, and we'll see where that <laughs> takes me. Um, this is kind of the edge. <clears throat> I have some more guidelines as to where these things are. Sorry, that might be loud with the mic. Pencil on canvas is not <laughs> a soft, quiet thing, but I'm almost done. Uh, let's see. Get an idea of the edge of shadows here. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I think that's probably good. There is this chunk of lighter green in here. Now, one thing I want to, because Monet always, his paintings have this sort of pastel look, and it really comes down to the fact that his colors are just going to be naturally lighter. And so I want to make sure I remember, that was what I struggled with yesterday too, was how do I keep things light enough. And I'm working bigger, so I have to have more paint to keep this, or to cover my canvas. But I'm gonna start with, hopefully today I can just finish like all of the background because I want it to blend, I want it to be soft, um, and then work on the other stuff next time. Feel free to ask questions or leave comments or whatever. I'd love to interact with you guys. Yesterday I was using this brush, but it's a little too small, I think, for what I want to do here. I might use it occasionally, but I'm going to go for probably this size here. Or I could do this. This would force me to go looser. Hmm. Let's maybe try that first. Do I have my spray bottle available? Yes. Okay. I'm using a little bit of slow dry medium today too to help with the dry time of the acrylic, hopefully to slow it down a little bit more. Um, okay, let's dive in. Do I know what I'm doing? No, I don't. Does anyone know what they're doing? No, I don't think so. You fake it till you make it, right? Okay, I'm gonna start with this. I know it's too bright, but we're gonna just put something down here. Oh, I can actually put this back <laughs> the way it was so that you can hopefully see a little bit better. Hello to those who just joined. Welcome. Doing a Monet inspired landscape. I don't like what that fast or slow dry medium does to my paint. Ooh, it 
made it way too transparent. I didn't even add very much. Ugh. That's irritating. It's okay, I can do more layers. I can fix it later. But I want to work my way down here. Dig into the white sooner than later, because again, colors need to be more pastel y. Always go beyond, like go into your sketch a little bit, like go past your lines. Something I have to constantly tell my students because they they go right up to the line and then they bring their the other color right up to the line and then it's like you still have a line in between. So you have to cover the line. And the line is just a suggestion of a general location. Ooh, that white's better. I think it's because I used the mixing white too instead of the instead of the titanium white here. Makes a difference. <laughs> Let's just say. Uh, it's too bright up in here. It's way too bright. So I'm going in with my white. You're just kind of globbing on paint, I guess. Impressionism, that's what you're going for. You, me, I mean me. I want to put enough white, or sorry, blue in the distance. Or sorry, behind the tree in the distance. Sorry, I can't talk and paint. So I'm going to put it kind of in spots that for sure are showing the sky trying to keep things darker up at the top because the sky is always darker up above and it gets lighter as it reaches the horizon and then little pockets of of blue sky through something always appear darker. So I'm putting that in maybe a little darker than it is over here, but it'll make sense when it's like surrounded by uh, trees. <laughs> um, oops, come on back, picture. Because the tree is going to be on top of this later, so I can I could just fill the whole thing in, but I feel like I don't I don't really need to do that. Impressionism's messy, so this is just part of the part of the game here. I do want things to be a little greener as they come down to the horizon here. Oops, and I've got too much blue, blue. Green, blue is what I want more so than the blue, blue. A 
Although there is actually down in here, there is a little bit of blue, blue, blue. It's like a cloud in the distance. Going down past my horizon line a little bit. I can still kind of see it through the paint. That's all I need to do. All I need is to make sure I can still see it. Okay, my paint doesn't seem to be drying as much today, which is nice. So I think the things I've done today to change that are helping. always do layers. I can always do layers. <laughs> That's funny, Dave. <laughs> All Dave sees are cats in the clouds. I, I could see that a little bit. I could see that. That sometimes happens with impressionistic or abstract stuff as you can see things in the in the random brush strokes. Uh, there won't be an actual cat in this painting, sorry Dave. I think I'm, I'm liking where this is going color-wise and texture-wise, keeping it loose, keeping it loose. I really want this stuff back here to be really light. I kind of lost the edge of my tree here, but I think it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. I want things to be light enough in the distance. <laughs> okay, fine. See ya, Dave. If there's no cats, he's not happy. <laughs> That's true. He only sees cats in everything. Do you see cats when you look at someone's face? Love you too, Dave. Thanks. <laughs> I'm not offended. Don't worry. Don't worry. Cats are not my goal today, so. I should do like an animal portrait or something. Oh, thank you, Laura Elizabeth. Very nice of you to say. It's coming along slowly, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't always look like much when you just start with one color, but that's okay. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I just wanna make sure I actually went into my tree enough and I can always go back and, you know, add some more layers. I just want it to be as raw as possible. Uh, okay, so while that's still there, while this edge is still wet, I wanna go in and do uh, the edge of the ocean, but in order to do that straight, I need to turn this the other way. 
Um, and I'm going to have to face it at me a little bit more to do that. But let me make sure my color is mixed correctly. And the color of the ocean in the background, which again, I'm kind of going for a little bit lighter as this is sitting here. I'm like, is it too dark? Just a little bit in here would be nice. Okay, um, ocean is kind of, uh, it's just darker than the sky, but it's similar colors, the blue and the green, green blue, ultramarine blue and the green blue. So yeah, we're gonna mix that. Uh, let's see. white is like my best friend in this painting, <laughs> this painting style in general. So I'm squeezing out the white again. You can count how many times I squeeze out the white and let me know how many times that is. This is number two. I'll try to remember to tell you when I'm doing such a thing. Um, I feel like the water, cause the water is just a little darker and it kind of, I don't know. It looks grayer to me. So. I'm gonna add in, oh uh, no no no, this, red. Sorry, don't talk with the brush in your mouth. Red, we're gonna add a touch of red to it. Ooh yeah, just to, and it's a, it's a warm red, so it's got a little yellow in it too. And that's what we want, we want the yellow to interact with the blue and the red so you get a little bit more of a neutral happening but it does need to be light enough because yes it's dark but it's still in the distance Ooh, and I probably put too much white darn it that always happens to me always start slow <laughs> don't do what I do <laughs> Um, and I'm going to have to try it on here because you don't really know on a palette next to a bunch of colors versus on white or next to the color you're supposed to see it with. So um, we're going to give this a try here. This is where it gets a little tricky because I do want to make sure that it's straight. Um, I'm going to even turn my phone here so I can see the picture. Um, I'm overlapping my edge a little bit. Straight lines are hard. Straight lines are hard when you have to eyeball it. Oh man, oh man. My brush isn't helping me in this, but that's okay. We want to keep the edge somewhat rough, even though it's going to be straight. It, I don't want it to be like crisp. So I'm going to just put it in like so. And I am kind of just going most of the way down so that I can um, visualize the whole thing. I'm going to flip it this way. Oh, it's not too bad. It's a little weird in the middle here. Look straight. Sure. I think it's a little higher on this side than it is on this side. So let's see if I can fix it holding it this way. Just 
just slightly. I think that's better. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. Okay, let's see. Um, and that color is going to come forward more. It, to me, looks lighter back in here for some reason. So now that we have a line, I can kind of go in and make sure this is actually just a touch lighter. I don't know why it's like lighter right back in there, but it is. It might be actually because in the photo, it's up against that dark tree. And when you put something dark next to something light, it can kind of exaggerate it a little bit more. And so that's probably what's happening in the photo. It's not actually lighter in the distance, but it's looking like it. Just because it's next to the dark tree. The joy of colors and how they interact with each other. Don't you love it? Okay, now we're going to fill in this part of the ocean here. Come down a little bit more, even though the grasses and stuff take over this corner. Just to make sure we have our base is covered over there. And it gets just a little, a little richer. Oh, it's not really that color though. Just a little bit richer over here. Man, the ocean is so cool. Living in Colorado and being landlocked, it's just always amazing to go visit the ocean. I love it. Okay, and then over the edge of this cliff thing or whatever, there are some waves peeking out. And so I want to put those in there. But am I happy with those colors? It's still, it seems too perfect. <laughs> it's too perfect in like precision. I need to fix that. I need to like make it messier. Um, again, it's the background. It can be softer with texture. And then as it comes forward, it can get a little bit more. But I just don't want it to be too... We're going to put um, the wave that's kind of crashing over this way and one crashing over this way. Moving my brush different ways. Letting it kind of glide across the canvas in weird ways to create the impression of waves without actually painting waves. <laughs> That's the trick, right? Um, I don't know if that's doing anything, but whatever. That's that's good enough. Oh, there's a little thing. Okay. My horizon got a little wonky. I should look closer at his 
at Monet's Horizons. Actually, that helped a lot. I want it to be softer, but I still want it to be straight. So if I kind of brush my brush my brush <laughs> over <laughs> the edge there, I can get kind of a little bit of a haze. Yeah, that's what I want. It's like, how do I keep it straight, but yet keep it really hinted at? Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Rinse off the brush, watching my time. So I want to value your guys' time as well, and I don't need to rush at all. This is what it looks like so far. Up close, without some without the glare from the lights. All right, and. Let's see. I'm gonna work on that circle of light that's in here, which I already have the top half of that now. And I wanna do the, the sort of rock in the distance. So I'm shifting now from blues to different colors. Great. So I'm gonna squeeze out my red. <clears throat> And my yellow, because I'm going for, I'm going for a brown. And let me just show you real fast the colors I'm using here. I don't have brown, <laughs> and so I have to, I have to make brown. This is a more pinky red, magenta. This is a more natural red, yellow. I've got my sort of green blue. I've got my blue, blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit more purple in it. Um, and then I do have a purple in case I, cause sometimes getting certain purples is hard. So I did buy one of those and then I've got my white as well. So I have to make brown out of these. Um, and brown is a warmer color. And so I need to use my red, warm red and my yellow, but those two together make orange which is a perfect base color for brown because I see orange and brown. And so we want to make, this is where I might need my spray bottle again, just to make sure this stays moist. Um, but I'm mixing my red with my yellow to get kind of an orange. And then brown's like the easiest color to make. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, how do you make brown? But it's really, the easiest thing. I need to add white because it needs to be light. So there's my base and then I'm going to add in blues to that. Um, specifically, let's start with the green blue more because that's going to push it green, right? Might then add in the other blue a little bit. I'm going to maybe need some more red. So if it goes too green, I do want to make sure, oops, I add in red. And white. And it's a balance. You you and in the process get a bunch of different browns together. And so you do need to like slowly, oh, I think that's what we want. Slowly builds it up till it's the right kind of brown. Because there's not just one kind of brown. There's there's a lot of browns out there. And you have to know, is it a red brown? Is it a green brown? Is it a gray brown? Is it a purple brown? Is it a... Um, I think this is the color I want. Oh, too dark. So hard to tell until it's on the canvas. More white. I think more yellow. I want it to be a little warmer. So it's a little bit more tan, I guess. But this is probably closer to what I want for my base color. And so this rock here, I have like too much paint on my brush. Ooh, I should have brought my blue down. I still have blue. That's a good thing. I 
I remember I overlapped into my shoreline, so now I have to go back and overlap into it the other way so that I make sure I don't make my shapes too small. I actually want a little bit of blue in this to, yeah, push it back a little bit more. Those things in the distance are a little bluer. And things up close um, with my other brush. I'm just going to just put that blue in while I'm thinking of it now. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. And I'm going to have this little space. My edge can be, you know, fuzzier because it's farther away. And then this, the color of the path is similar, but it's lighter and it's a little warmer. So let's see if I can capture that since we're working in this color right now. Want even brighter, even warmer. It's maybe too, too bright. Because I want this, I guess, to be warmer, that to be cooler, but it's still warmer than this, you know. sun is kind of hitting it a little bit. Um, there's darks. I'm going to squeeze out my purple because I want um, to put in the darks in the rock back there. Whoa! Calm down, paint. but they're again, gonna be light. So I have to add a white to them because they're gonna jump forward way too much. So let's see how this looks. I don't know if this is gonna be dark enough, but I actually want a little, just a touch more purple, just, just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so it's got some shadows on it, but it's really pushed back. They can be pushed to the bluer side because again, they're far away, but the light is also warm. And so you're going to get some pushing and pulling of dark or of warm and cool. Okay, not bad. I'm gonna rinse off my brush for the first time and warm up just the this part of the rock there. It's kind of a lightening and brightening at the same time. Um, yeah, so it gets a little bit of a little bit of light hitting that surface there. Okay, I think I, I think I like that. 
it's far enough away. I'm noticing over in here, there's kind of this similar color. Again, because I'm coming back to this later, I want to work with the colors I have and not mix too much more. Gosh, I don't know what's happening here. This is all in the tree, behind the tree. I want it to be grayer, there we go. And the blue is kind of mixing with it, I don't know. But it's not, it's not a focus, so I just need to put the color down back in there and not worry too much about it. I don't want it too warm, so putting in blues, keep it pushed back. Okay, we're gonna do similar things in here because this is where the interesting grass is are. And they're very gray. They're kind of a little bit gray green, so I might make sure I have my blue blues and yellows kind of together a little bit to hint at a little bit of green. This is where I can fix my edge again. I want to cover up any canvas along the edge and just plop in some of this color. There's some darker pockets I don't want to lose. Lose those. I know pushing up like that makes seems to make sense. Seems to work. I, well, I don't know. I feel like the background is, no, it's not, I'm not gonna say that. I, I, usually the foreground is my least favorite part to do because especially in, in impressionism, cause you can't go super detailed, but yet your brush strokes need to show a little bit more texture in them. And so they, they can look, I don't know, it's just hard to get that balance of like keeping it impressionistic um, and then backgrounds may be the next hardest because it's kind of similar, but in the reverse, you have to keep it simplified, um, smoother, look like it's farther away, um, that type of thing. And that's hard to do. All right, I've got like the canvas covered over in here with the greens that peek through. I want some more greens in here. I need some darks to pop in there, but let's, well, I have this green on me. 
I'm going. And add that. If it's light enough, it'll show up between these green or these dark patches. Ooh. These neutral colors are kind of difficult to see. It helps to kind of zoom up on the picture a little bit, but at the same time, I don't want to do that too much because it it forces me to get too detailed then if that's the case. I think I am getting too detailed. Ah, zoom out. Okay, there's more green over here. It gets a little bit warmer. As it's kind of in this corner here and little pockets in here have a little more green on them. There's also more brown. Notice how I haven't like washed my brush in a while. It's kind of, that's what something you do in oil a lot is like let the colors kind of sit on your brush a little bit more because um, they can kind of mix a little. You don't want to do it for too long otherwise you get muddy, muddy color, but it can really make your colors look nice because you know if you put new paint on the tip of it it's going to have the new paint on the tip of it and you just paint with that and then the under colors can kind of push through as you keep working with it oop that got a little too much light okay, I'm making sure I'm coming down far enough into that shadow thing that's going to be down in here Okay, now I do want to make sure I have my darks planned out and placed a little better because there are some good darks in here. I don't want too, too much dark, but enough that they can kind of show up among the grasses. And when it's wet, you sometimes have to just lay it on like butter instead of trying to scrub it in too much because it blends too much of the colors that you have. So I'm kind of laying it down. My paint is definitely better today with spraying the canvas, or sorry, the palette. I could spray the canvas too, but that's too wet. Some people do that. As long as my values are similar in the distance, it should be good. And, you know, the background is just as important as the foreground. Um, so I need to make sure I put enough effort into the background. But at the same time, it's not the focus. And so it's this balance between making something look good so that when later I put in the stuff that's around it, it'll be like, oh yeah, all of it works together and it makes sense together. Just a little, it's just a little warmer in here. As if there's little flowers or something popping up. There's a little bit more of a distinct red. Woo, too much. Sometimes putting a little sparkle like that is nice. Something different, right? 
Maybe I'll do the same thing with the yellow in here a little bit more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this so far. And a lot of these same colors are down here, but they're going to be richer and more vibrant. This, I think, is going to be okay. I might add in more white to that, but it's hard to know until I put in, like, this dark stuff to reveal that thing. It might be worth me just putting in kind of a dark edge to that and seeing how that looks. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid because it's not going to be just black. It's not just brown. It's not just a dark blue or green. It's going to be a little bit lighter back here than it is like up in these spots here. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm liking it though. As you can see, you know, it's not as easy as it might look <laughs> to paint like this. There's a lot of, you have to paint it in colors and stuff for it to actually work. I'm gonna put that in there a little bit. I like that actually a lot. This isn't just, it's just not as vibrant back in here. It'll make sense when we add the tree later, but it's just a little bit more. Oh. A little more of a vibrancy a lighter hint of stuff back in here. And again, it, it was revealed to me after doing these other colors down below. So colors are affected by things around them pretty strongly. Blend that horizon just a little bit. Actually, I'm liking that color a lot. It, it kind of hints and repeats itself in here a little bit. This sort of sagey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sagey color almost. But I want to keep it in here because it, it gets warmer this way. Ooh, I like it. Okay, don't overdo it. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. It's enough. Rinse out my brush. All right, I think we're gonna call it a day for this guy. Um, I've brought my stuff past my sketch a little bit so I can bring my my values, my shadow, which will be really fun in here. I kept my colors really blue and light. Hopefully you can see that okay. But that is the up close. That is the version that I will leave you with today. Give you an idea of that. Um point it back at me. Thanks for watching, guys, and commenting and um, just being present, making it fun, more fun. <laughs> Painting is fun, but um, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because it is, I'm coming out with new content all the time, so you don't want to miss out on that stuff. So um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and have a great Christmas. All right. Bye.